Hello and welcome to my Halo 3 ODST review. As with the other ones, I had never played a Halo game until I had started playing them sequentially about two weeks ago, so I've never played them back in the day. So I have a little bit of a different perspective on them, there's no nostalgia for me. Uh, but with Halo 3 ODST, uh, as I understand it was a spin-off. It was going to be like an expansion or a DLC and they just kept making it bigger and bigger until it kind of became its own game. Now, one of the coolest things about ODST is the fact that it's just different. It's really different than the other three. It is, um, it takes place in New Mombasa on Earth. You're not a Spartan. You're, you're not a super soldier. You're not superhuman. You're, you're, just, you're just a dude and you're in a squad. You're in a squad for the first time. And it's kind of interesting that it, it you kind of shift around. I won't spoil the story too much. There's not really that much to spoil. Um, the story is one of the weaker aspects of the game. Um, but the way that it's told is really, really good. So yeah, like I said, you, you go through the different um, squad members and um, you kind of quasi play as one central character. You'd like, did you keep coming back to as you're like catching up to the squad? It's kind of strange. I'm not sure why they told the story from like in this particular way. Uh, so it makes things a, a little bit jarring when you're shifting around all the time. Um, I felt like the the look of the city is really, really cool. You spend most of your time in the city, in and around the city doing different things. And uh, the idea of playing in this, this one city, it kind of reminded me a little bit of the uh, city in Blade Runner, which is really cool. Um, and I love the music. The music is a, comp it's done by the same composer, but it's a completely different kind of music. It's more jazzy than anything else. Uh, you get a lot of pianos, um, a lot of jazz instruments, and it works. It, it works. It's a very good atmospheric game. Uh, and it's got that Halo heart in it. Uh, it's got all the, the same kind of gameplay, fantastic gunplay, excellent enemies. Um, you know, you're, you're down there hunting the Covenant, you know, doing everything, uh, again, without spoiling. But, uh, the game does unfortunately suffer a few shortcomings. Um, one of the problems is the lighting is both really good and really bad. It just kind of depends on what street you're on. Sometimes the lighting uh, is very moody and it's very orange again, you know, with black or it has red and black, you know, kind of illuminating you know, a gloomy or a foreboding street. But then other times you're like, you see a street lamp and it's shining a little pool of light right there and then the road is pitch black. And like everything around you is pitch black and you can't see anything. And it's like, that doesn't make logical sense. Like light travels, you know? So it just it just kind of uh, makes me wonder, you know, what, they, they didn't balance the light quite right. And you're dependent on using your, there's kind of a, a semi night vision thing, but it doesn't look like night vision. And I, I didn't really care for it that much. It just didn't work. Um, it's kind of subtle on, on why it's, it's hard to describe, but, uh, one of the other big problems with it is that the writing was, was kind of bad. Uh, I did not like the romance between, uh, the t two of the main characters in the squad. It just was so forced and the guy just wouldn't shut up about it. Like, dude, this is an alien invasion. People are dying. Thousands of people are dying. The city is getting destroyed. And you're whining about your relationship with this other soldier? What is wrong with you, man? Like, it, and it just won't shut up the whole game. And it's, I don't know if they thought it was supposed to be cute or something. I don't know what they were thinking. It, it just, oh. And, and a lot of the other dialogue, it just comes off as just kind of cringy and just silly and just doesn't fit or work for me. And I, it, it comes back to the writing. I don't know if they had their if Bungie had their B-team writers on it or what, but that was one, probably the single biggest flaw with the game was the writing was just bad. Um, there also weren't a whole lot of memorable missions, a whole lot of like big things that happened. Um, it wasn't anything like terrible explicitly that happened. Um, the difficulty was probably this, like among the smoothest in the, in the whole series. Um, there were some memorable stuff that happened a little bit towards the end of the game, at least. Uh, there was some pretty cool stuff that happened. 
um, you know, where you, you're back with your squad and things are going on and, and that gets kind of cool, but because they don't flesh out the characters enough, uh, one of the characters gets, uh, gravely injured and I didn't care. Like I just was not invested in the characters cause they just weren't fleshed out. And, um, so that kind of hurt it a little bit, but it's, it's, it's another one of those mixed bag Halo games. Like it's got really good highs and really bad lows. Um, the, the game in general, uh, is, is not bad. It's not a bad game. Um, there were some other, uh, very minor, uh, things about it that I think could have been improved or tweaked a little bit. They did away with the, um, dual wielding, which I felt like it was a little bit unfortunate not to have even the option to dual wield, but eh, I mean, I could take or leave it, honestly. Um... I did really like the opening. The opening where you are uh, you're falling down, and that's how you're like you're landed on the city. That was pretty cool. And like you know things go wrong on the way down, and you have to like find your squad mates. Not a spoiler because it's literally in the first like one minute of the game. But that was that was pretty cool. So overall, I would have to give Halo Three ODST a B minus. Um, just because it, it has some of those flaws, uh, you have to traverse the city back and forth a lot. You have to use your your compass, otherwise you're going to get lost. So it's just kind of one of those things I felt like the city was a little bit too samey. Um, it wasn't really copy paste, but it was just kind of just too much of the same. And the game was also very, very short. Um, I think it was only like five hours, uh, if I remember right. So yeah, it was, it was pretty short. Which makes sense if you understand that it was originally going to be just a DLC. But apparently they charged full price for it back when this came out on the 360 uh, back in the day. So, yikes. I don't, I don't know what they were thinking there. <laughs> They're probably thinking money. But um, but it's not a bad game. It's, it's a worthy Halo game. It's something different. And it's told in a different way, which is very cool. And I think is a, uh, a valuable addition to the Halo franchise. I think it's very important for companies to experiment like that and try new things and not every new thing is going to work out you know but i think it's worth doing rather than just delivering the same thing over and over and over again so that's that's what odst had and that's why i give it a b minus still a good score it's not a bad score it's, it's it's all right it's good uh definitely check it out it's it's a i do recommend playing through it at least once uh it's pretty fun it's it's a pretty fun game got some interesting things about it it'll give you a little bit more backstory and history in the halo universe which is really really important for lore and understanding more of what's going on so anyway that's my review of halo 3 odst i hope you enjoyed the video uh, if you did please leave it a like and subscribe if you aren't already thank you so much for watching